These are 10 things Quest 2 users hate. The first thing that is really annoying is having a teammate with no might. Let's say you're loading up into a game of population 1 and you really want to win this thing. It can be really frustrating to have a teammate that just absolutely cannot communicate with you, making the game a frustrating experience. Another example would be in the once amazing game, Echo VR. I really wanted to win some games because if I'm going to be real with you, I was straight trash. But trying to talk to teammates without a microphone or teammates who are always muted will make me very mad because I just wanted to win one game. Especially if they're the reason that we died. But just for Echo VR, everybody go in the comments below and type in rest in peace because this game was amazing. And at the end of this video, I have something that every single Quest user on the planet hates. However, this next one is something that makes me personally extremely mad. Yeah, why y'all put cheese on my cheeseburger? This is something that frustrates me and probably does other people as well. Every time you get on your quest and you want to play a game, well guess what? You have to update it. So you update it and you try to go ahead and play another game while that one updates in the background. And guess what? That other game needs to update as well. And you just continue the cycle and then suddenly every app on the quest has to have an update. And you're probably wondering, why was it not updated overnight? Your quest is fully charged. Why didn't you just do it? Most of the time, after this, I just put down my headset and I just continue about my day because why in the world would I even want to use it anymore? Now everything needs an update. But there's something that can actually ruin your gameplay, and that is stick drift. Stick drift is when your controller stick makes you move or look in a game without you even touching the sticks on the controller. This happens to every single controller and there's nothing you can do about it. Like on God, this is the biggest problem with every controller on the planet. Quest controllers have this problem, Xbox controllers have this problem, Switch controllers, literally everything with a joystick has this problem. And you wanna know the worst thing? There is no fix to this. So once you have it, you are stuck with it forever, just like your look. Unfortunately, you can't blame this on Zuckerberg, so it is what it is. What's your name, sir? My name is Dees. Dees what, sir? But moving on to the next one, we have dead controllers. One day you wake up on a sunny morning and you want to boot up your Quest 2, only to get a notification that your controllers are dead. Let's be real, getting batteries is such a hassle for you to go to the remote and get the batteries all the way out into the living room and come all the way back and put them in your controllers. This is a minor annoyance because yeah, you can easily just get new batteries from your drawer or something, but when you just want to get on and hop on a game real quickly, it's nice to have your controllers always fully charged at all times. This is a universal problem with all controller players who play with their controllers you know, wirelessly, unlike the nerds who plug their controllers into their PCs or consoles. But this next one is something that all people who use the Quest hate. One thing that really grinds my gears is the short battery life. The Quest 2 can only last around 2 to 3 hours max, which is not bad on paper, but when you're playing a heavier game like Bone Lab, Blade and Sorcery, or any game that is hard to run on the Quest, battery life becomes so much shorter. And you're probably wondering, why don't you just buy an external battery pack? Well thanks to AMVR, you can get a battery pack that goes on your neck and extends your battery life on the Quest 2. You can get it in the description below and use code POYATEK for 10% off your purchase on anything on that website. But speaking of which, the Quest 2 battery is bad enough and a lot of us have had our Quest for a very long time, meaning that our batteries have gotten worse from when we first got it. So now we have even less battery life, which is really, really terrible. This is something that literally nobody talks about, but I think it's really frustrating to use, and that is the app overview. When you want to pick a game, you go ahead and press the app view thingy, and then a bunch of games pop up. But the menu is just so cluttered with apps and games and 90% of them aren't even installed. So I don't know why they're in my face. There's so much there and I hate it. There's also apps that should be apps like the explore page, the settings. It's just a bunch of useless stuff that really takes up all this unnecessary real estate and it's a waste of space and it makes me very pissed. I'm sorry, but I think Zuckerberg is going to have to go back to the drawing board with this one and restart because this is actually the worst thing on the quest 2 and it makes me so mad this next thing that quest 2 players hate is actually kind of rare and i don't see a bunch of people talking about it back with another milk help! help one thing that i have never seen a soul talk about is your guardian disappearing usually when i boot up my quest 2 my guardian is already right there saved and ready to go just like how it should be with every single quest out there 
and it's supposed to remember it since the first time you put it there but every so often it just kind of forgets like i don't understand like is it a human is my quest 2 having memory problems i don't get it i didn't pay all this money for it to simply just disappear and to make things worse it teases me it pops back up and then it disappears again and it pops back up and it just flickers in and out and then i have to restart my headset and once i restart my headset my guardian is not there and i have to retrace everything this doesn't happen all the time and that's actually kind of rare let's say you're having a bad day you just want to get on and then this crap happens like what in the world and then you just get off because why but this is definitely not as annoying as what i have last on my list embarrassing but before we get there i have another thing that quest 2 players hate and that is inviting friends so a couple of weeks ago my friend and i wanted to play pavlov on the quest 2 so we started up the game and immediately ran into a problem we had no idea how to play together in a lobby so my friend we're gonna call him jim he tried inviting me but he just couldn't find my name but we found out that i was actually offline so we thought that was the solution i made myself online again and guess what he still couldn't invite me and I wasn't able to join him no matter what we did. This was such a huge headache and it just put us off playing Pavlov in general and we just got back on to playing normal flat screen games. This wasted a bunch of our time and I wish there was a much easier and streamlined way to do this. To be honest, I don't see myself going back to play a game with my friend on the quest. Maybe if I really wanted to super badly, but that's not coming anytime soon. But another thing that I want to talk about that a lot of us hate is the horrible Quest 2 head strap. This thing is the worst. It ships with the Quest 2 and is so super duper super flooper flimsy. If you're playing a fast paced FPS game, then turning your head is like whipping around a 5 pound boulder that is strapped to your head with strings. It's actually so heavy that it moves your head for you. It's really hard to explain what using that horrible head strap is like and it's also really hard to use. Also, from what I've seen online, they can get really dirty and brown after like six months of use. If you don't have a big forehead to contain this 300 pound headset, then you will have to go and spend around $40 for a head strap so you can finally have an enjoyable experience. This head strap is the worst thing to ever grace the planet, but let's ask my friend what he thinks about this. Hey Jimmy, do you like this head strap? Please get this headset off me, it is unbearable to wear. You see, I told you so, but hold your seatbelts because this is the final thing that every Quest user hates the most. Light work, no reaction. Light work, no reaction. And finally, the thing that you've all been waiting for. One thing that I think every Quest 2 player can say they hate collectively, as a group, as a community, as a team, are racist, annoying, gorilla tag players. These types of players not only exist and thrive in games like Gorilla Tag, but there are all other popular games like Pavlov, Population 1, Echo VR, Rec Room, VR Chat, the, the list just keeps going on and on and on till the end of time these players have one mission and one mission only and that is to annoy the crap out of anybody who happens to cross their paths on a bad day you're probably in the comments screaming that you can just mute them but imagine you're trying to get on a game and you want to chill with some people be social and have fun and you have little annoying timmy in the corner screaming the n-word and every other bad word in the universe that was created before the dinosaurs I don't know, this is just something that grinds me in my gears in my house. It makes me so, so mad. If you guys enjoyed this video, watch this one about the 10 stages of every quest user. Also, if you guys become a member, you can get access to IRL videos and can see my face and what it's like to make these videos and just stuff about my life.